Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this small dirt road diorama for the Renault R35 tank which I made in the last video. So to start the diorama I took some XPS foam and cut it to approximately 145mm square. The reason I chose XPS foam is because I need to dig down into this to make a ditch and you can obviously do that with something like a picture frame. So I marked out the rough boundaries with a wall in the bottom right corner a small verge, a ditch, another small verge, and then the road itself. And then I cut the ditch out using a craft blade. And I also cut a few small pieces of wood to form a border. And I glue those on with regular PVA glue and I pin them while the glue dries. If you've seen previous videos that I've made, you'll know that I like to use this AK dry ground acrylic paste. It's a great mixture with a really nice texture and it goes a really long way. This small amount which is left will be more than enough for this diorama. At this point I'm not worried about the shape of the ground. And then once the base is covered, I just drag in the direction that the vehicles will travel with the lollipop stick to make sort of ruts and so on in the surface. And while that's drying for 24 hours, I moved on to the dry stone wall. So to build the dry stone wall, you are going to need some Lego. And this is going to get messy, so I recommend you don't use your favorite Lego. In fact, this is some cheap Chinese stuff, which is why it just fell apart there in my hand. And I found generally that two Lego bricks, two blocks wide is good. And because it's weak and cheap, I've also made these little braces in the end to keep the two sides in place. There we go, two studs wide is a good width for your regular 135th scale wall. We need some of this talus, which is a good scale stone for this. And basically we're just going to fill the void here with these stones. And when you think it's full, give it a good shake and you'll see that the stones settle down quite well and actually make quite a bit more space for you to put some more stones on top. This is a really important step because it makes sure that there are no gaps in the wall and it means that when the stones are touching each other there'll be a much stronger bond later on. And what I would recommend you do is put the wall on some tin foil rather than something like tissue and you'll see why that is in a moment. And then I've taken a very, very thick mix of PVA glue. This is at most 25% water. And I'm just soaking the stones in this with a pipette. Just absolutely lathering them in. And the reason we use the foil is because then we can recycle that glue that's spilled out the bottom. Perfect, no point wasting good glue. And you need to give these a really good soaking. Every stone needs to be covered. And I recommend that then you leave this for way over 24 hours. PVA tends to dry quite slowly. And if even a few of the stones deeper down are not fully dried, the whole wall will collapse. So I'd recommend a good 48 hours of drying time. Once everything is dried, you can start to remove the mold. And you do have to be really, really careful here. I did manage to pull a few stones out and I'll be honest, this wasn't actually the first time I did this for this video. Um, my first attempt collapsed completely. When I've made a wall like this before, I use XPS foam as a mold instead of Lego. And I have a feeling actually that the foam might be slightly better than Lego. I might switch back to that if I try this again. And then once the wall is out of the mold, I give it another 24 hours to dry because there can still be some damp glue on the inside. Once the terrain was dry, I gave it an airbrush of Tamiya XF52 Flat Earth. And when you're painting this, you need to make sure that you do it from all directions so that the base is completely covered and none of the material is still showing through. 
With that done, I attach the wall to the base with a little bit more of the acrylic texture material. And that extra material can be touched up later. The next step was static grass, and for that I have a mix of 2mm and 4mm medium green and light green. I use some scenic glue in the middle and at the edges of the road to apply the 2mm grass. I use a static grass applicator for most of this, except for the grass that's directly under the wall because I wanted a much rougher appearance to that. And then I added some more scenic glue, maybe a little bit too much. And then I just threw on some of the longer, darker grass to give a rough verge kind of appearance to this area. When that was done I was generally happy apart from the appearance of the road which was a bit monotonous. So after watching a video from Vallejo I decided to use some pigments for the road, primarily an earth colour but also with a, an even darker brown in places. It probably would have been good to do this before I put the static grass down because it was quite hard to get the pigments right up to the grass. And then once that was done I used a really small amount of light dust to give the appearance of dry areas on the raised parts of the road. I know you're supposed to fix pigments, but I did an experiment here with various uh, thinners to fix them, and all of them seemed to change the colour of the pigment, so I decided just to leave it as it was. I also put some pigments at the bottom of the wall, getting lighter as I go up, to blend the wall into the terrain. There's also a couple of pieces of leftover PVA glue there that can be removed. For the water, I'm using a two-part solution uh, from Precision Ice and Snow, Chrysel Water. This is the dark brown water with sort of floaty around bits in it. That's the technical name for it. I'm not sure if this is epoxy or not, I do know that it doesn't create any heat, unlike my uh, failed experiment with epoxy on my previous diorama. And also according to the instructions, because of that you can pour this as deep as you like. I did make a small mistake here in that I got a little bit too close to the grass and the water started to wick up the grass and into the pigments, and I actually had to go and go back over the, uh, the sort of dampened areas later on once the water had dried. Then for a final touch I took some of these laser cut flowers. This is quite a large sheet so I cut off a strip of them. I don't need this many for this diorama but I've got another diorama in the works and it's easier to work on strips of these because you can paint them all at once. And I made sure when I painted them that I came down from an angle so I could get the side of the paper as well. And for the flowers I just painted them a mix of orange, yellow and white. Although they're very small, they're surprisingly easy to put together and they respond really well to PVA glue. And then I use a small bit of PVA just to attach them to the surface. At this point I thought that the diorama needed a little bit more balance, so I decided to make a seafoam tree for the corner. I have a full video on how to make seafoam trees, which I'll link in the top right corner. But essentially you take a piece of seafoam, shape it the way you want it by removing the branches, give it a brown and grey coat of paint, and then dip it in glue and you can add either static grass or uh, scatter or flock to get the kind of leaves that you want. And here is the final result using the Renault R35 from my last video.
So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like and a subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, which is going to be the final part of the Australian M3 Lee.